Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I go by Rachel Ray on the internet and today I am going to be doing a whip in chat which stands for work in progress in chat. So pull out whatever it is that you might be crafting on whether that's diamond painting like me or knitting, cross stitch, paper crafting, whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to clean your house, so be it. <laughs> Happy Saturday. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and I hope that your wallets aren't too much lighter, <laughs> but we're all kind of guilty. There were so many sales, right? So many sales. I was good. And I only bought a few things and like I, I resisted really, really hard. Um, as you know, I'm planning to go to Germany before Christmas and I don't know if that's going to still happen, but I need to save my money like it's happening. <laughs> so, before we get started today, I wanted to tell you about this kit. This is After the Rain by Diamond Art Club, and this is all I have left. I'll move it a little bit so you can see. This is all I have left, so I'm hoping that I can finish this by Tuesday. Tuesday of this coming week, I'll be streaming on Twitch live, and I'm going to try to finish this, this whole painting on that stream. So we're going to go ahead and get started in this small section, like half of what's left. Um, but I know that I won't be able to finish a section in this one video. Um, I have a few things that I want to share with you before we actually get into the diamond painting part. So if you want to skip this, you can, but um, you might like this first thing. I got a package uh, from Sharon over at Shiny Shazza. Now, I'm going to rip into this. I just don't want to show her address. So she sent me this. She said she had a new shape of diamond painting tray and I really wanted to try it. Look, we got a Moam joystick. Yum, yum, yum. They're really good. So this is Sharon's business, Shiny Shaza. She's in the UK. <laughs> Dear Rachel, I await your verdict. <laughs> Love Sharon. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. So go check out her link. It's down below where I have her stuff. I've been using her trays almost exclusively. So, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, so, wow, look at this. That is so pretty. Look at the gold foil and butterflies. Ooh, and this, it says shiny Shazza. Oh, it's 3D printed? No way. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, that's really pretty. How did you do that? Wait a minute. This is a resin tray, but then it has a 3D printed side. That is so cool, Sharon. Oh, I, lo I love it. I love it. So the, I think this is 3D print. I don't know how she did it. I'm not going to pretend like I know, but that is so cool. All right, let's, let's try it out. So we got that. We're going to, well, we'll try it out here in a minute. Ooh, and it matches my painting. <gasps> how pretty. Okay. Uh, the next thing is actually something that's too big to put on the table. This is a box from Therese. Y'all have been here for a hot minute. You probably know Therese and Teddy. Um, Therese is a really nice person, okay? Like a really insanely nice person. We hang out in the same circles. We watch the same creators. We watch Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and Cal Withington and Pippa Brown and, you know, We've become friends over the years and her son was doing a chair. I hope you can hear me. Her son was doing a charity, uh, raised fundraiser. And I was like, let me get in on that. Right. And she sent me this giant box because he was selling popcorn. And I was like, I like popcorn. And you know me and stuff from the States. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of popcorn. <laughs> Therese. Okay, I'm looking in this box. I wish you could see. Sorry, my box just farted. I, I wish you could see inside the box, but it's just, it is too big for me to lift up on the table. We may have to be distant right now, but you're right here in my heart. Oh, <laughs> Rachel, sorry for the delay. Living with the Teddy keeps me very busy. Thank you for supporting Teddy's scouting adventure. Don't forget to take care of you, Therese. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. <gasps> Okay, so <clears throat> white cheddar popcorn, white cheddar popcorn, three bags of white cheddar popcorn, yes, 
Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, caribou coffee. Mmm. You know what's funny? <laughs> Therese. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me move this popcorn. Let me move this out of the way. I want to eat some, but I won't. I won't right now. I'm going to save it. Did you know that we just ran out of coffee? <laughs> You've just saved me a trip to the store. Thank you so much. Life is short. Stay awake for it. I don't know if I've ever had caribou coffee. This is perfect because I need ground coffee. I use a French press, which is this thing right there. The little thing with a plunger. Thank you. Ooh, I see Takis Fuego. Love these. Love, love, love. What's this? Ooh, sweet and salty kettle corn. Yummy. <gasps> Cheez-Its. Y'all, I love Cheez-Its. They're my favorite cracker. Mmm, chocolate expre espresso beans medley. Ooh, I love I love espresso beans. They're yummy. Let's, we've got some more stuff. Hold on, let me grab it before the popcorn takes over. Ooh. Okay, let's start. Let me baggies. Put the snacks back in the box. <laughs> Stuff. You just sent me a big old box of chips. Oh, look, it's a face mask. So we've got this this thingy that goes in there. Look how pretty. Oh, I love it. Thank you. You know me and cherry blossoms. Thank you. What else we got? We got this. Ooh, Archer's Arts. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, cool. This is another diamond painting tray. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's a, okay. Oh, cool. Look at this. So the bottom of the tray has the ghost. And this side has a pumpkin. <gasps> How cool is that? And then this is a scraper. A drill scraper. Oh, I'm gonna have to try that out. Thank you so much, Therese. Oh, that is so cool. And then, oop, it fell off. There was this ribbon on it. I'm not gonna put it back on. But we've got Uniku. Is that, did I say it right? There's a kitty. Vintage arts, crafts, and gifts. Oh, ooh. Ooh, it's a stamp. It's one of those uh, stamper things. Oh my God, it's a cherry blossom. <gasps> Therese, oh, you're such a great friend. Thank you so much. Did you hear me talk about how I wanted one? And that I just couldn't, I couldn't decide. And then, wow, and you got the pink and the white waxes. Thank you so much. That is so cool. Oh my God. That is so cool. And that it, it has an instruction manual. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to use that. I haven't done my Christmas cards yet. So I'm going to try that on them. And then there's one more thing. Whee! Cute. Let's see. Woo! Candies. Let's put them in here. Espresso candies. Latte candies. Coffee candies. <laughs> Just a whole big old bag full. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to have to keep them in here so that uh, when I get low on energy, I can have one of those. <gasps> Thank you so much, Therese. Oh, that's so sweet. I love everything. I'm going to have to message you right after I film this video. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay. Now, let's get diamond painting. <laughs> Thank you for, for um, watching that little bit of friend mail because I have had it for a while now. And I really, really wanted to open that on camera for, for those ladies. Thank you so much. Um, so this is, like I said, this is called After the Rain by Diamond Art Club. Um, I'm going to use my shiny Shazza, <clears throat> excuse me, my shiny Shazza tray. I'm going to use my 
Enablers Outpost pen, and I'm gonna use, I have an Amazon drill container system that was gifted to me by Heika. I have a link for that down below as well, if you need one. Um, it is an Amazon affiliates link, but, or associates, they call them associates. I, I think that I have like 75 cents in my ballot, so you don't have to use it, but if you do use it and then you buy something, um, I am required to, to let you know that I may make a small commission off of that. Um, but anyway, however, moving on, I hope that you're all having a fabulous weekend so far. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? For me, I actually didn't do anything. Um, we, we didn't do anything special. We could have, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't right, quite in the right headspace for it. So I just kind of stayed home and uh, saved my energy, so to speak. So um, I hope that you had a good time or that you didn't, you know, that it was a restful time anyway. Oh, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with my, my wax. So I'm using, um, what is this, Quake Hold. I'm using Quake Hold in my multi-placer today because, well, because. <laughs> I was testing it out over the last few days, testing it out, meaning like in this particular pen, and I do kind of like the Quake Hold in my multi-placers a lot. Um, just something different than the pink, or the blue wax, because blue wax in the multi-placer tends to get dirty really quick, but then again, I am using the multi-placer a lot more than the single placer on this painting, so that's kind of bound to happen, I guess. But yeah, uh, this painting has been awesome. Um, a lot of like straight lines. So I've really been enjoying it just because I don't have to single place everything. I don't like single placing. I know that some people do. Uh, I never really feel the urge to single place ever, even though I know that, you know, it gives you a more finished look and all that kind of stuff. That is true. I'm not denying it, but it's just not for me. I much prefer to, um, to get the painting done as quickly as possible. And then, and that's it. Like, <laughs> I'm not really interested in displaying so much. And I'm done giving diamond paintings as gifts. So maybe if I was giving it as a gift, I would feel a little bit more picky about my drill placement and making sure that everything was lined up and perfectly straight. But it doesn't bother me if they're not perfectly straight. So I'm one of those weird people, I guess. Um, I thought that today maybe I could answer some questions that I've been getting on my videos because I don't always have a lot of time to respond to comments on YouTube. I try my best to answer questions on social, social media, but sometimes it gets really overwhelming and I do apologize, but there's a lot of you and only one of me. <laughs> I don't have any um, employees, so um, it can get a little chaotic, but uh, I thought that I would, I would answer some questions. So um, on... I'm just gonna go as as long as I can, right? And and I'm gonna get some water as well. Robin M. in my chakra sneak peek unboxing asked, "How come you would need the picture to be bigger if it was round drills? Round drills and square drills are different shape, are different sizes." A square drill is smaller than a round drill. The squares are 2.5 millimeter, the, the rounds are 2.8. And so the resolution of the painting will be lower with the round diamonds because they are bigger, which means that in order to get the same exact rendering or a simil very similar ren rendering, you would need a much bigger sized painting in round drill than square. So for example, if we were to do this painting, I just like seen a drill coming off. If you were to do this painting in square, it could be smaller because you would get the same rendering, the same resolution 
in a smaller size because the drills are smaller. I hope that makes sense, but that's why. The, the round drills are bigger than the square drills. Then on one of my videos is called I, I Wish I Had Known. Um, what I Wish I Knew When I Started Diamond Painting. And it's actually one of my most popular videos. Even though um, I feel like I could have made that video a little bit better, but that's neither here nor there. The question is from Laura. Actually, she's got a few questions. Um, she made a question on that video saying, do you have to keep the plastic on when you're done with the painting? She just started and she's just wondering. Uh, when you're done with the painting completely, no. You don't need to keep plastic on it, but if you have a round drill diamond painting, I mean, if you have pets <laughs> um, and you're planning on storing it, then I would just keep it in a box or in an uh, artist tube or in a portfolio or something like that because things will stick to it. Dust will stick to it, stuff like that. Um, but as you're going, like, you know, while you're working on it, yes, you should probably keep the plastic on. Um, I only take off plastic when I'm finished with a section and then I roll up the painting. I don't think that you can see it actually, but that's what I do is that I, I roll up the painting when I'm finished with the section and I move on, but I don't keep the plastic on it when I'm completely finished with the painting. No. And then she asked in my absolute beginner's guide to diamond painting part one, the only issue I'm having is that my neck gets sore. Any ideas on how I can do diamond painting without my neck getting sore? Um, what you need to do is you need to adjust your posture and possibly your workspace. So I have a tall desk so I can work. I can work here with no problems. Sometimes I get sore. Sometimes I start leaning and that's when I need, I know that I need to stop diamond painting for the day. Um, but some people use a drafting table where the table tilts up. If you can't get a, ta a whole table that does it, you could get an artist's easel and the easel will tilt. I have a wooden easel that I got from Amazon. I should probably make a page with all of my recommended stuff from Amazon, but, um, you can find those things you know, in different places as well. You don't have to go to Amazon, of course. But um, just to give you an idea, I'm using, I, when I'm in my other room, I'll use an A3 sized easel. I don't like it to be too, too big, but sometimes I'll use an easel to, to work on my recliner or some people use it to recline in their bed and diamond paint. But really, it's just about finding the right, the right position for yourself. And it sounds like right now you're not in the right position and it's making it really, really sore. So play around with it a little bit. Um, it's an art form. You, you might be sore for the first few days as well when you're diamond painting or the first few weeks because your body's not used to using those muscles. So that's something to keep in mind. I remember when I first started diamond painting and I went gung ho with it and like, I mean, you know, eight hours a day kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I was really sore. So that could be it as well. So let's see, I'm going to roll this down a little bit. Uh, oh, no. Okay, uh, Makayela Davis on one of my really old diamond painting live streams asked, what kind of camera do you use to record when you diamond paint? I'm just using my phone. I have a P Huawei P30. I'm due for an upgrade, but that's what I use. I've only ever used phone cameras. I think before, like a long time ago, before I got this camera, I was, or this phone, I was using a Samsung. I can't remember what model it was. It, it wasn't anything fancy anyway. So yeah, just a regular camera phone. Uh, Debbie, oh no, sorry, sorry. I'll get to get Debbie in just a second. 
Uh, oh yeah, no, 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 I will. Debbie Surridge asks, were you able to input your Pokemon chart into Pattern Keeper? Yes. Um, for those of you who haven't heard or you're not catched up, caught up or um, maybe you just started watching me, I'm going to be working on an epic genera Generation 1 Pokemon pattern that's a free pattern. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be pretty epic, but, uh, so, so the name says it's a digital chart available from Lord Libidin. And I think I have it, I have it linked on my floss tube video. If you want to go and check it out, basically it has all of the first Pokemon. You can get whatever generation you want. Anyway, she's just asking if it can be used in a specific kind of um, application on on the phone or on your tablet called Pattern Keeper. It reads the it reads the digital patterns. And yes, it is possible. You do have to input thread numbers, but that's not so difficult to do. So yes, it is possible. Um. <laughs> I've got a lot of a lot of questions on um, a lot of questions on the video where I was eating spicy ramen. <laughs> I did the spicy noodle challenge because I got a um, hundred subscribers on my Twitch account, and if you don't know what Twitch is, it's basically where I live stream. That's where I go live. So if you want to catch me live head on over to twitch.tv slash Rachel Raycraft, and it's got my schedule on there. You can see when I'm going to go live. Carla Q. Michael asks, where can I get the color chart you show in my Dear Diary and Halloween Witch uh, Diamond Art Club unboxing? The color cart that chart the color cart the color chart that I showed in that video is a DMC floss chart and you can get those online you can find them if you're in America you can find them in Walmart and Michaels and you know other craft stores um, just a DMC color chart and then she's asking also how do you tell the newer drills versus older drills all of the new kits that are have released from Diamond Art Club for the past two, three months, something like that. Can't remember exactly, but any new painting that you get from Diamond Art Club that's come out on the website that is new, uh, it's going to have the new drills in it. They all have new drills now. Uh, but if you're buying something that's older stock, that's been there for months and months, then it's possible that it has old drills, but it's it's fine. It's fine. Just if you have a problem or if you run out or whatever, they have a warranty on the painting. So don't worry. Carrie Gold asked on my whip and chat, do you ever use beads on cross stitching? I do. I have. Um, I finished a cross stitch called the Dark Queen of the Sea Stitch Along by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And that one had beads. I'm doing a lot of, of stitching that has beads, but I haven't gotten to the beading stage of those ones yet, if that makes sense. Um, but I, I have and I will. <laughs> um, and also a related question was from TINE5972. Uh, do you still do beaded cross stitch? And if you do, where do you buy them? I have not done beaded cross stitch in a hot minute. I find it really, really hard. Uh, they are very expensive and hard to source. Uh, one store that I found is in, it's something like UA Embroidery or something like that on Etsy. The, the kit that I got was from AliExpress. It is not made anymore. Uh, so I can't, I can't really share that because it's just, it doesn't exist anymore, but I don't know if I want to continue doing it because it is really difficult. That, that beaded cross stitch is so big. 
it's almost it's almost unimaginably large and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it and I don't know where I would hang it so we'll see what happens with that painting but my hopes are not high <laughs> on that one and me ever finishing it um lanky tour uh, commented on my post review for Royal Diamond Painting, my custom of my dog, Luna. Oops, sorry. And I'm dropping drills. They said, I ordered a second custom diamond painting of my cats. I'm mad. The cheap companies can't get the colors right. My calico cat is not pink and Tabby isn't dull purple. It's frustrating because it took a long time to arrive. Am I doing something wrong? I have iPhone and big canvases I ordered. I believe a lot of ripoffs. I'm just, ew. I thought the photos I sent were clear. Okay. One. Uh, it's probably not your photo. It's probably the way that you're looking at the photo. The thing about color and pixels is that so there's a range. There's a range of 447 colors that diamond paintings can be made of, right? When you look at something, you don't look at it with all of the shades in mind. Uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to move you and show you my custom of Luna again. Uh, the of the the picture that you were looking at when you made this comment. I don't know if you're going to watch this video, but. Um, I'm going to I'm going to try to explain because it's not just my dog is gray and white and black. My dog is a lot of colors that I don't see when I look at my dog. So bear with me and I'll show you. OK, here's my dog. Uh, this is not a great angle, but hopefully you can see. So you can see my dog has blue eyes, gray fur, gray, black and white. But if you look close, there's a lot of like green, sea green. There's blues up here. There's a purple. There's uh, purples here. There's teal here. You see that? In the front of her fur. See down here as well? Purples. My dog's not purple, but my dog has a lot of shades of color. And in those shades of colors, that all makes up the picture. So when you step back, you're not going to see the purple drills or you're not going to see green. You're going to see shadows and light. So the the effect of the light bouncing off of the, the diamonds, that's what you're going to see. So it's really important when you get custom diamond paintings that you realize that, especially with human faces, you're going to get a lot of colors that you don't think belong. But if it, if my dog was just white and gray and black, that's three colors. That would not look like a dog. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're going to have colors that don't make sense, but when you step back from the painting is when it makes sense. And I'm not back far enough. I'm only back, um, right now I'm back with two feet. Hang on. Now I'm back the recommended viewing distance from the picture. Do you see the purple? Do you see the blue? Do you see teal? You don't. Sorry about the mess, but th that is what makes the photo look realistic or makes the diamond painting look realistic, just like with that one as well. You have to have all of those shades so that when you step back, you are going to just see the picture as it was. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Let's go back to diamond painting. Let's see, I'm, I'm looking at some, people have questions about things that I don't even remember anymore. So I'm going to skip those. I'm really sorry. Um, a, a, a thing that I get a lot, a thing, a question that I get a lot is about AB diamonds and how they're so frustrating to work with and all this kind of stuff. I, I hear that a lot. And the thing is, is that I think you got to understand the normal diamonds. These diamonds are made out of resin or acrylic, depending on where you buy them. 
okay? They're, they're almost smooth. They have facets, but they're almost smooth, which means uh, that they are easy to pick up with pretty much anything, anything that's sticky. But with AB diamonds, which are the ones that have the iridescent coating, are you going to give me a hard time? You're going to give me a hard time. So these have an iridescent coating on the top. And these diamonds can be hard to pick up if you're using fresh wax or if you're using a super sticky wax, right? So let me just adjust that again. Uh, what I recommend is that if you're using blue, pink, whatever diamond painting wax that comes in a kit, use old wax. You can tap it off your hand a few times and get that skin oil, the natural oils of your skin onto it. It makes it less sticky because you don't want a lot of stick when it comes to ABs. And if you are loading your pen after each and every color, I think you might be loading your pen too much. Your pen should last on average with regular pink wax. If you go back and watch my video on Battle of the Waxes, um, where I, I tried out a whole bunch of different waxes to see how long they last. A regular pink wax from a diamond painting kit lasts for like an hour, an hour and a half. So you don't have to refill that often. When you come to the end of the stickiness for regular drills, that's the perfect amount of stickiness for AB drills. So please just be careful. If you're really having trouble and you don't want to wait or something like that, uh, or you don't want to touch the wax off your hand or whatever it might be, use tweezers. You could use tweezers and it'll save you the trouble. There's no stick there, so it won't, it won't cause you any issues. Um, but I tell everybody the same thing. You got to use dirty wax when it comes to ABs. So I always place ABs last in the section or right before I go to load my pen again. Uh... Asking me questions of things I don't know anymore unless I have to rewatch the whole video. And I'm really sorry, but I don't have time for that. If I don't mention it at this point, if it's been over a year since I've made the video, I don't remember. And I'm really sorry. Um, let's see. Lily Love also commented on the... It says, it says it's an absolute beginner's guide to diamond painting part two, all about squares. I looked at eBay and saw they had pickup tools like a wheel. So you could do an entire row in one take. Sounds smart, but I don't know if it's practical. I have a video on how to use the wheel. I used the wheel on Nightbringer. I did not use it on the pen. I took the wheel off the pen and just used it like this. I ran it across like this. It works perfect. It works great. Um, you do have to have a very, you know, you have to practice your technique a bit and the lines may not always be straight. You have to have a steady hand and you will have to practice it, but it works. It, it does work. Um, they also ask what size canvas is a good size so you can see details. That depends on the picture. It a hundred percent depends on the picture and nothing else. So if you have something, if you have a picture of something that is small inside a very large landscape, in order to see the very small thing, that thing is, that painting is going to have to be huge. That's one of the reasons why I don't really do landscapes. Um, and I like to try out pictures and render them before I order them. Now with Diamond Art Club, I don't really do this because I I trust they have they have a rendering that they show before you buy, but a lot of places don't do this um, because they 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 know that you wouldn't buy the smaller ones, and that's where they're making their money. Um, there are websites, I'm trying to think of what it is, but it's basically like a cross-stitch calculator. 
type of website. I can't remember what it was. I'm pretty sure that I have a video in my how to diamond plate paint playlist that shows how I used to do it. I don't do this anymore because I buy from companies that only render the paintings. But if you're trying to get a custom picture done, um, ask for the rendering first before you buy. You can do that uh, for, you know, ones that aren't customs as well. You just might be waiting a few days to get a response. But yeah, I would just ask for a computer rendering first. Things have changed a lot since I started making videos in 2018. And a lot has changed since I made those beginner diamond painter videos as well. But in essence, it all remains the same. The bigger, the better. That That is never going to change. The bigger you go, the clearer it's going to be. So get it as big as you can. You know, as big as you can get it, depending on how much wall space you want to take up. Because that's the real kicker, I suppose, is that not everybody has a lot of wall space, so you have to work within what your wall space is. But yes, bigger is better. Uh, someone was asking what happened to Diamond Art Club's website. Nothing happened. I don't know. Don't know. Uh, everybody's asking me if I tried saltwater taffy. I have. <laughs> Lisa's Coloring Corner commented on a cryptid, the Cryptids video, the Theory Tuesday video, and he, she asked, how much time does James spend researching the, the stuff for the videos? If I have to guess, it's a few hours for each episode. Um... But sometimes he puts in more time than I think is necessary. But yeah, he, he spends a lot of time on them. In fact, he really wants to... He wants to, today, which is Saturday, he wants to go ahead and um, film for Tuesdays because he has it all stored in his brain and he doesn't want to forget anything. So yeah, it takes him, I would say, between like two to five hours depending on the depending on the stories and what what we're going to be talking about then let's see do 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 where did you get the saltwater scrapbook patterns i think i got them from fire poppies which is a u.s based store in texas i think i think that's where i got those patterns they're a good resource they've got a lot of um cross-stitch patterns, but they also have like fabrics and threads and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Bev. Bev Jones on the Theory Tuesday video also asked, did you do Mothman yet? Yes, I did. <laughs> we covered Mothman before, um, and we've covered all the cryptids except for the last few. So that will be next week's video on Tuesday. Super excited for that. Thank you so much for watching those videos. Um, <laughs> uh, Lanky Tor, who asked about the custom, also asked, I've been looking for diamond paintings with clear drills that look like little cabochon stones. Does any, can anyone tell me the name of these kits? Those are called rhinestone kits, crystal rhinestone. Some sellers call them pebble, but most sellers call them crystal rhinestone. You have to look very carefully though, because sometimes the sellers, especially those that are operating their business out of China, uh, they use the word rhinestone, but really they just mean acrylic diamonds and not the crystals. A lot of people ask things like, um, where do you get X from? Where can I find this or that? I just want to gently remind you to look into the, into the s description of the video. And it can be a little hard to find depending on your, you know, on your device. If you're new to YouTube and you're not used to it, um, 
on the computer, you'll see a little bit of the description and then there'll be a hyperlink. It says show more. When you hover your mouse, your cursor over it, it'll change colors. You have to click that in order to open everything to see all the details inside of a creator's description uh, box. Some people call it the show notes or the info box or the down box, whatever they're, they're describing the description of the video. And it's in there that I put all the links to everything. So when you ask, where did I get something? Um, I had the name of the website in, in the title of the video. So that's a good place to start is just to Google the name of the store if you if you don't if you can't see it or you can't get any further than that uh, same with um, in my stretch canvas finish video I get it a lot How, what is the seller that you use for my frames I bought the frames and I linked the seller I link I linked the description the item if the item is no longer there then you may want to go and search Google or you can search uh, the website that I that I bought it from to see if you can find something similar. If the if the item link is no longer working, it could be that the seller has created a new listing. Uh, yes, a lot of a lot of people ask me why do I stitch the way that I stitch, and I think I'll save that for floss too. But basically, I stitch. Um, backwards from a lot of people because it is easier for me to get the needle underneath my threads and I'll show you that next week because next week I am thinking pretty sure thinking about making a whip and chat with stitching I just find it very difficult sometimes and I want to show you my new kit uh, so uh, my new diamond painting um, that I'm starting in December I want to have this finished before the end of November and then I'm going to start this painting that I've had in my stash for years. And uh, so I may be doing that. But next week, I will be stitching on camera on Twitch on Thursday, the second. So please join me over there and I'll show you all the tips and tricks. Bring your questions. Bring your questions. Um, oh, wow, that's a really old video. <laughs> Uh, get ready with me how I organize diamond painting projects. This was this was published in 2018. Um, Mrs. Valona asked, uh, I hope you'll still see this comment. Is it important to use unscented dryer sheets or can you use scented too? Is it a personal preference or does it have a purpose? I'm asking this because I have trouble finding unscented ones where I live. You can use scented ones, but they will be really strong. There might be a residue that's left on the diamonds. Um, I would recommend that if you can only get scented ones, that you leave it out for at least 24 hours before you cut it up and put it into your drill storage because I didn't once and it took a really long time for the smell to go away. I'm very sensitive to smells sometimes. Um, it makes me sneeze a lot. So that is uh, that is what I would recommend. I just realized that I'm really not diamond painting while I'm answering these questions. I do apologize, but <laughs> sometimes it's hard to do two things at once, right? <laughs> uh, Lama Saraf asked, how do I clean the pink pen? Um, you can, well, I don't think it's a great idea, but you can use the pointed tweezers to get inside and dig out the wax. The problem with the, using your pointed tweezers for this is that it can bend the normal, uh, bronze. I'll get one here. This bronze diamond painting tip, you know, the, the gold one, right? Um, it can bend that very easy. Uh, which is why a lot of us moved over to the stainless steel or the bronze tips like that. However, um, instead of using the tweezers and instead of buying the everlasting tips or whatever it is, use a toothpick. Grab a toothpick and scoop out the drill, the wax. Very easy. Keep one in your little, like in your diamond painting storage container 
on the side of it or in a pocket or whatever. Um, keep it with your drill tray and then that way you'll always have it handy to uh, take out the wax. That's what I would recommend. Um, did you ever check into the artist of Transparent? Yes. Please go check her, check them out. Let me just let me get the link for later. Yes. So the the artist for Transparent on Diamond Art Club is Yume. Y U U M E I. You can check out her store like our print store and all of our pictures on yumeart.com. Y U U M E I A R T dot com. Um, she is fantastic. She's a, she's a wonderful artist. I really like her style. There are several of her diamond paintings, um, available at Diamond Art Club right now, actually. And, um, some, there was at least one was a Black Friday release as well. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. Okay, I got a really interesting question on Whip and Chat number 81. I'm not going to say the person's name because I don't know how to take this comment, right? The question was, how do you do all your crafts? Where do you find all the time to complete them? I don't know how to answer this. If, if it was a genuine question asking, uh, you know, uh, it feels there were there were several question marks after this, so I'm guessing that uh, the 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 intention behind it was a little bit like jealousy. Um, but this is my job. This is what I do. I make diamond painting content. I make YouTube content. I am a Twitch creator. I spend my time sharing tips and tricks with people, sharing my life with people. It's not for everybody. I know that. Um, I consider myself to be a bit of a teacher. I used to teach English for almost a decade before the pandemic. And so, um, I make time for my crafts. I schedule time for my crafts. This morning I spent an hour, uh, or actually it was only about half an hour knitting. Then I've spent probably two to three hours diamond painting today. And then after I film and edit and upload this video, which is going to take me about two hours. I will spend the evening cross stitching my little heart out. Uh, and I do that so that I continue to be able to make content for people. A lot of people think that um, this isn't a job, but it depends on how you treat it and how much time you invest into it. Um, and, you know, I resent these comments a little bit because if it's not coming from a nice place, then it's a little bit rude. Um, what I do in my time and for my job is just as valid. Um, of course, I'm not a doctor or a nurse or, you know, someone who's saving lives out here, but I do share a lot about my personal struggles, my, my mental health. Um, I'm very open about that here and I, I encourage other people to be open about theirs because I found that I struggled for a really long time to believe that I ever had a problem. And until I had some community behind me that encouraged me to seek help, I didn't. I was afraid. And so the point of my channel, behind it all, behind the unboxings, behind all of the diamond paintings and craft supplies and everything is really just to encourage people to take care of themselves because life is short and there is somebody out there that cares about you. You matter so much. And if you don't think that you matter to anyone, you matter to me. So please, if you are struggling at all, with anything, reach out. Reach out to someone in the community. We are here, you are valid, and we love you. We want you to be here. We want you to stay here. I don't understand, and it does it does get me a little bit upset. And I know that <laughs> when I get upset, people say that it sounds like kittens in a box, you know, I'm mad kittens in a box. Somebody shook the box, okay? Somebody shook the box right now. Um, 
I don't like it when, when people judge other people based on what they do in their free time. Well, this isn't my free time. Uh, me sharing this on YouTube, this is not my free time. This is my working time. But I also do it in my free time because if it didn't, then I would never have anything to show you. Uh, and I realize that's not for everybody and that's okay. This is what I choose to do with my time. And I thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you so much for liking my videos and even for disliking my videos. Thank you so much. You are engaging with me. You are, a lot of you leave me comments and they're so wonderful. I read them all. And I love it when you have questions. I love it when you want to get involved in things that I start or you donate to the organizations that I try to support when I have charitable events going on. Thank you so much. You make this fun and interesting. You're the ones that really control what happens here. Um, I sometimes I feel like a puppet, but I try to I try to rein it in. You know what I mean? But it's not it's not as easy as maybe you think it is, ma'am. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Thank you for the little rant. Um. Oh yes, and Lisa, Lisa's, Lisa's Craft Coloring Corner, excuse me, Lisa's Coloring Corner, she has a channel here on YouTube, you should check her out if you like to color. Um, she also commented on the Whip and Chat, saying thank you for sharing this part of your life. I was talking about um, trying to get into mortgage, we're, we're, we're interested in buying a house and saving up. She wants to know if we're planning on staying in the countries or moving into a city type of atmosphere. Uh, I know I had other questions for you as I was listening to your chat, but now I forgot. I hate when that happens. <laughs> um, we are staying in the country. Uh, I don't think that you could pay me to move and live in a city again. I have lived in cities for a long time and I don't like them. I don't like the smell. I don't like the noise. Uh, I do like the anonymity. Did I say that right? I like feeling like nobody knows my business, but truthfully, that's that's no good to anybody. That's not good for me <laughs> because if if I can walk around like nobody nobody knows me, nobody cares, then I get really depressed. Um, when I live in a, in a small community of people, we look out for each other, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna make plans to help better those people's lives because you're going to care. Whereas in the, in the, in the city, it's easy to not care. Now I know that there are exceptions to that. And I realize that, but like I said, based on my experience of living in the city, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm over that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. So yeah. Um, and the, oh, add extensions to the floor stand to make it tall. Elizabeast does floss tube. Um, I must check you out. Back on floss tube number six, I was talking about beaded cross stitch. There you go. And they were asking if I could make the, the stand that I had it on taller, um, it's possible, but I found a better stand. It just doesn't work very well with beaded cross stitch. The beaded cross stitch is so big and so clunky that the, the floor stand I was using just wasn't, wasn't quite working properly. Um, it's too big. It needs to be done in hand and it's a very large project. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm in two minds about it. I love, I love it. It'll be a great outcome, but I don't know if it's a great outcome for me. I don't know if I'm going to be the person that finishes it. It may end up in a D stash one day. And then one of you lovely people <laughs> will give it a new lease on life and maybe finish it. But I don't know if I have the patience for a project that large anymore. So yeah, that's, that's it for the questions. I think I'm pretty much caught up on 
questions from my comment section. Um, other than that, you know, basic life updates, I don't have much to tell other than um, we are now at the stage where we are trying to get Gigi and Luna closer and closer to each other. I'm spending a lot more time with them together, but Luna just moves in a way that Gigi doesn't like. Gigi was an outdoor cat only, so she's not used to dogs. She's used to running away from dogs, and when, when she runs away, Luna wants to chase because she's playing, right? And Gigi doesn't like that. So right now, I'm just letting whatever happens happen, right? They're going to figure it out on their own. I interfere if, you know, if it seems like things are going to get a little too violent or something. But truthfully, they both hold their own, you know? Luna, Luna is not a big dog. You might think she is, but she's not a big dog. She's a little dog. For a collie... And yes, Luna is a collie. She is not an Australian Shepherd. A lot of people think that because of her coloring, but Merle is not a breed. Merle is a genetic defect in the color. So she's got a lack of color, so to speak. Not albino, but a similar thing. And she's a lot smaller than what a normal collie would be. Um which I guess is helping. I mean, if if she were bigger, I don't even know if the cat would handle it. Like, would the cat even hang out, you know? Luna is a rescue as well. She's, she's a bit neurotic. <laughs> I joke about uh, her being a bit on the unhinged side sometimes because she just can't calm down. She's got issues. Um, so I'm trying to make it very clear that Kitty should be left alone and respected. <laughs> so we're working on it. Um, Health-wise, everybody is good. A uh, little bit busy. Uh, feeling much better this week compared to last week. I think it was last week. Was it last week? Or I didn't have I didn't have a whip and chat because I was so sick. Um, I can't remember exactly. I think it was last week. But uh, yeah, I was I was ill, um, food poisoning, and had a great great week on Twitch. Had a really good time just hanging out with all of all of you who joined me. Um, I flip flop. I do one day of cross stitch, one day of diamond painting, and one day of gaming. I did two days of gaming this week. It was very fun. I'm playing Stardew Valley. Really enjoying it. Cannot wait to get my Switch, Nintendo Switch, so that um, I can be a little bit more comfortable when I play. Finding that I'm not as comfortable playing PC games anymore <laughs> as I used to be. Um, but I do enjoy playing it, and I'm having fun because it's the first ever playthrough, and uh, everything is new. So uh, feel free to join me. For that as well if you like. I know that some people have said that they find Twitch to be a little intimidating but actually um, if you watch a little I would recommend watching a YouTube video on how to navigate Twitch. It's very easy. Once you get the hang of it you know once you know where things are where the buttons are and and how to do things it's quite easy. And you'll learn while you're in the chat with other people. People are very helpful, especially in the makers community. There's a whole bunch of people over there going live, doing crochet, amigurumi, you know, um, cross stitching, knitting, paper crafting, journaling. They're doing everything over there. There's diamond painters over there. It's, it's really fun. And the audience sometimes skews a little bit younger, but not always in the making community. Uh, even even the crafters themselves are not always youngins, okay? So don't feel like you're not going to be accepted or, you know, oh, I'm too old for that. Like, you're never too old to learn something. And you can always lurk. You don't have to 
You don't have to talk if you don't want to. Um, it's just like with YouTube lives, lives, you don't have to engage in the conversation if you don't feel comfortable for whatever reason or, you know, that sort of thing. But it is a little bit fun and it is a lot different for me. But then again, I just enjoy being able to connect with everybody in real time. And it is, it is, it has brought me a lot more joy the last few months being over there and um, actually getting to chit chat with people instead of just making videos and talking to myself, getting out of my head a little bit. So I want to give a big, big, big thank you to everybody who has joined me over there, who has come to watch my live streams and supported me in one way or another. I do appreciate you. Even those of you who don't talk, that's okay too. Um, I still see you. <laughs> You're in there <laughs> with us having a good, good time and that's all that matters. So that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, everything is good. I'm going to make my floss tube video this week. Um, sorry for not making it last this past week, uh, but it was Thanksgiving and, you know, there was a lot going on and yeah, uh, just kind of feeling a bit down uh, without my grandpa around. So I wanted to be able to have a little bit of space and also I didn't really stitch much <laughs> so I was afraid I didn't have much to show you anyway but if you haven't seen the week before's episode this is your reminder to go watch it I know not all of you cross stitch so you know if you really aren't into it it's okay but if you are into cross stitch and you have not watched it yet this is your reminder because there's something special in the video and that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> so that's pretty much it this time next week you will not see this painting again uh, unless it's a post review on this channel because I am ready uh, Thanksgiving is over I am ready to move on into the holiday spirit and season so get ready um, it'll be sure it'll be it'll be December and I'm just, yeah, I'm so ready. <laughs> Let's switch gears. Let's move from the oranges and the reds into the reds and the greens. Okay. Okay. Anybody else with me there? Yeah. So, um, thank you all so much for, for joining me today. And thank you very much for also, uh, leaving me a little, a little note. Let me know how you are and how did you get on for Thanksgiving? Did you have a good time? Um, and if you didn't, I'm, I'm really sorry that you didn't have a good time. I know that the holidays aren't for everybody. And also I know that not everybody's American that watches me. So if you didn't celebrate Thanksgiving, then what did you get up to this week? Did you have a good week? I would love to know down below. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go now because my, my wax is no longer sticky. Perfect time to place AB diamonds. Remember that? Um, Thanks for joining. Thank you, Therese, so much for the gift, gifts, gifts, and all of the popcorn and the coffee. Super excited for that. Um, and thank you to Sharon at Shiny Shaza for the new tray. It works really well. Um, and those, those diamonds do flip over really, really nicely. So I hope you can see that. Um, the spacing on this tray is really good. And I love it. I love that it has her name on the sides. And of course, that it has gold and, and butterflies. So nice. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. And take care and stay safe. And I'll see you soon in my next video. Take care, all. Bye. <laughs>